Um, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Oluwini Kawagini, and um, I have here with me Nick. Um, we, this is a continuation to our earlier series, the ETF walkthrough for Washington DC series. So um, this time around, we'll be taking you through um, some of the best practices for ETF test generator and cloud runner. I've got Nick, who is a software engineer on the team. Nick, do you want to give a bit of intro? Hi, I'm Nick. I worked on Test Generator and Cloud Runner, and so hopefully I can help with best practices. Awesome. So uh, as usual, we might be talking about some things on our own map here. So be uh, showing you this um, safe album notice, just so you're aware about some of the things we might be discussing. And um, this is our agenda for today. Uh, we're basically going to go through the general user guide for Test Gen and Cloud Runner. And also we're going to talk about some best practices um, after which um, Nick will do some demo and show us some things around test gen and cloud runner. So I guess the first thing I'm going to talk about is we've, we've had um, a couple of customers talk about the fact that um, it takes too long for their test generation to, to get completed or executed. And some of the resolutions we have um, from my engineering team here is we, they would advise that the first thing you should, should do is to limit the test count per table. And um, basically you want to also um, have an overall test capacity in such that you limit the number of tests that are generated. And the third one being the query-based filtering. If you are aware about our new updates, you would see we have um, some presets that are based on users of the tables and maybe some service catalog items also. So those are the things we advise when it comes to you experiencing um, your test generation to taking longer to execute or generate it. Um, the next additional guide would be for you to pre-modify your suit ex execution. As you can see from the explanation, um, it's best to execute the entire test suit before implementing any changes. Then once you've done the changes, you can now execute them again. The next one is to understand the fact that ATF is a regression test test tool. B are not a UI test tool, even though we can actually do some of those things, but our best um, um, strength is in regression testing your, your customization. Then um, we'll come over to demo later once Nick is ready. Then some of the best practices for, for test gen is to always regularly update your your apps. Um, we on quarterly basis we push out some updates on our on on the store. And since test generator and cloud runner is available on the store, you can always be sure that you get an update on quarterly basis. And also, um, catalog item management are uh, some of the best practices we we kind of tell our customers also. Um, using this can actually significantly reduce reduce the noise in your test. Um, we also advise that you optimize the test per table. Like I said earlier, um, there are some requirements, like we, we, we usually tell customers when it comes to optimizing the test table, and some of them are, while you're testing your table, prioritize quantity over quality, sorry, quality over quantity. You want to ensure that you're, you're testing the right thing and not generating so much test when it comes to using the test generator. I think another one is also um, acceptable limit, like it's generally acceptable to limit the number of tests per table to two or three. So the whole point is you're trying to um, ensure you have a comprehensive coverage when it comes to um, um, generating your tests. Um, additional ones are related to test suit maintenance approach, which Nick will be talking about once you get to the demo. I think here yeah, it's uh, I think this is the right time to actually ask Nick to go and show some of this um things we're talking about. All right, sure. Um so I might be retreading some of the same ground of what uh he's already covered, but uh the main important thing for best practices is keep your store app up to date. Um if you notice an issue where something you think is happening that shouldn't be happening, um First thing you should check is, is there a new store app version? And if there is, update it and see if the problem persists. Because um, we quite frequently have uh, cases where people have encountered errors that we spend time debugging that end up just being bugs that were already fixed in a new store app version. So you can save yourself a lot of headache just by keeping up to date. Um, and then after that, 
the next best uh, practice is if you notice your tests aren't running or your test generation isn't generating, um, check the cloud user page and make sure that this value here is still here. Because if um, your user becomes unable to log in for any reason, which can be like a script that requires the password to be reset or any other number of uh, reasons, uh, we clear that user from the property um, and this will be empty. And so that's how you could tell that your user is no longer valid and you'll need to ensure that test generation and the cloud runner both have a uh, valid user the whole time they're in operation. Otherwise they won't be able to log into your instance and do anything. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, Nick, I have a question for this. So what if a customer upgrades their instance? Does this still retain? Um, if you upgrade your instance in the middle of a generation or a test run, um, that will cause stuff to pause. You can't run tests or generate tests during an instance upgrade. Um, and the store app uh, isn't upgraded with the uh, instance upgrade. You'll have to upgrade that on its own separately through the store app page. Oh, I see. Makes sense. And so the next um, thing I want to get to is... Uh, I want to show off um, presets, which are a little bit more complicated, um, but are a pretty cool tool. Um, these, so um, as you meant, as you can mentioned, uh, uh, an easy way to just say I have too many tests and I don't really know how to handle this number of tests. An easy thing to do is just drop down the number of tests per catalog item and tests per table. Um, this is because um, the way test generation approaches tests. Um, is essentially the same for every user. Um, but what the differences are, arise are between the different users' roles um, and how they interact with business rules and ACLs and so on. And so um, having a handful of users like will be useful for capturing different roles and different role groups, but you get diminishing returns. So if you have like 10 users or 20 users or 50 users, you know, you're not really getting much more for the last like two thirds of them as you are for the first third. So if you are encountering too many uh, too many tests in your test suite and you want to get a handle on it, you can. Uh, this is an easy way without having to make too many decisions. Um, the next one is you can limit the overall max count. If you're getting anywhere near this number, you can drop it down to a thousand, and then when we get to a thousand successful tests, it will stop generating. And the more complicated but more powerful tool is you can use these filter conditions here on the bottom. And so you are able to filter um, different uh, use cases here. You can go to this filter section. And like, for example, uh, you have uh, dot walkable fields here. So you can do all applications whose name starts with the letter A, you know? And then, boom, you filter all users to be, or all tables to being a part of applications that start with an A. And so this um, has now dropped the number of tables from every table in the instance down to 41. Um, and this gives you um, a much more powerful way um, to control what is targeted by test gen. So, so yeah, um, actually another question. So now that we have 41 tables here, and initially I think we said we wanted three tests per table. Does that mean the total gen test that will be generated would be um, three times 41? That's 123 or so. So what the test per table means is, so this filter condition on the bottom controls what is even considered. Not everything that you filter in here will necessarily appear. It's what we will try to make tests for. And mm -hmm. we will not succeed on a good number of those. Some tables are completely inaccessible and so we can't even open them um, because all the fields are read only or something like that. Okay. Um, there's any number of reasons a test could um, not be generated, but what this controls is we will um, attempt to create this number of successful tests. And so for like agent assist recommendation here, we'll mm -hmm. keep going and we could have two failing tests and then three successful and then the three successful end up in your suite. Or we could just get three successful right off the bat. But this is the number that will cap the amount of tests you will try for each individual table. And this is the number that will cap the number we'll do for each individual catalog item. Oh, interesting. Makes it clear. Thanks. Yeah. And so um, all these configurations you've done, you can now save. Like if I wanted to save this as the A application tables, I can do that. And then you hit submit. And then now we have this preset here. And so 
if I refresh this page and I come back, you will have your preset here. And then if I go to the tables, you'll see it still has that query I added. And you'll also see it saved the number of test counts I had and the maximum test count that's been modified. And basically everything in this form <clears throat> that you can uh, modify will be saved as a part of these presets. So you can create quick configurations if you have um, generations you would like to run frequently. And so I'm not actually going to hit to start generation because it would take a while. But you can hit start generation here. It'll um, send off the request and start doing generation. And the next thing I want to show off is the browser orchestration queue. This is um, how you should track the progress and manage any job you are running. So uh, this will have all types of jobs. It'll have test runs and test generations are mostly what you're concerned with. Test users are login requests for when you are setting the cloud user. And we also do one before every test generation. But you can go here and you'll be able to see the estimated progress that it's progressed. If the browsers have disconnected and had to reconnect, you can see the retry count here. You can see the last time a browser um, heart gave a heartbeat and uh, showed that it was connected to the instance. And you also have this info log that will log um, as it moves through different states and it'll log um, uh, lots of different types of errors that can occur on a job will get logged here. Um, this message right here, a job was ended in cloud. That indicates that the um, browsers were torn down in our cloud infrastructure. It's not like necessarily a bug. It just means they were torn down. And so you can see here this job completed. And when the job completed, the browsers were torn down. So that is normal. Um, if you see this message in the middle of a test generation or something, it might indicate that some sort of error was hidden. Um, but if the retry count increases and the test generation progress uh, continues, um, it's generally not an issue. And the other thing I'll point out is this cancel job button. So if you have a test gen that's taking too long and you want to be able to do something else instead, you can hit this cancel job and that will stop the test gen from running or whatever else is in the table will stop it from running. And 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 when you click on the cancel job, does it also um, generate the message job was ended in cloud? Um, yeah, the job was ended in cloud actually comes from the cloud infrastructure. So that happens when the browsers are actually torn down. So if you hit that button and there was some bug where the browsers never actually torn down, you would never see that message. It's essentially a confirmation that the job has ended. Um, and it should be um, fairly robust. So if you it you can uh, also see that uh, the last check in time should stop updating if browsers aren't connected. Yeah. Um, Using sites. Yeah. And the other thing I'm going to show now is oh well, um I forgot to show it when I was on the test gen page, but let me just mention um catalog items tend to have a lot of use cases. Um, and so catalog item use cases can be like a big part of people's instances and they're very useful to have tests on, but there's also can be a lot of them. Um, and so if you're even after dropping it, if you're overwhelmed, um, if you have to start making cuts, uh, a good place to start is catalog items, just because of how many use cases it sometimes has. Um, and this isn't the same on every instance, every instance, it depends on the data present in the instance where these tests are created. So. This may not. This isn't a. This is a good idea to start with, but it's not necessarily a like a rule of thumb where you can always just cut down catalog items. Oh, awesome! And so now I'm gonna show off a test suite that I've already generated, and I'm gonna show you um, how I suggest that you approach debugging on these uh, test suites. So I created this test suite earlier on incident. And so the idea behind, behind these tests are that they are regression tests and they capture um, how the instance should be behaving. And so the way we do that is we open a form and we assert all the states and values that are present on the form. We make a change, assert all the states and values and step-by-step -step using data we found on your instance, we do that. And then we submit, open the form, check the states, we set some more values, submit again. And this allows you to um, implicitly walk through a lot of different ACLs and business rules because we're attempting to uh, exercise this form just how a user would. 
Um, and by using real data on your instance, we're hoping to capture real user um, usage patterns. And so now um, let's say I am ready to do regression testing on incident and I would like to run this test suite I generated earlier. So I can run this test suite. I hit run in cloud. This will start up in the background. And uh, these tests will now uh, send out a request. If we actually checked the browser orchestration queue right now, you'd be able to see this job is now queued there. And you can see when the request is sent and you can see so on. Um, but we just wait for the um, browsers to connect and run the tests. It'll just take a second. Good. So um, I, I think one, one thing we need to also um, tell them the fact that um, just the way they use the client test run out there, they can actually see, uh, they can actually manage all the tests that are running on your client device. The browser orchestration key does similar for the cloud um, cloud executions. So it's, it's they are both similar, but they run, they, they focus on different um, execution methods. The client test run out focuses on the client test device, or the browser orchestration key focuses on all the jobs or the processes that are being run on cloud right now. Exactly. And so I'm just going to cancel the rest because I already, it's already failed. Like how I, oh no, there's an error. So now I would like to go debug this error I've encountered. Um, the first thing I suggest people do when, because realistically, if you're debugging uh, failures on a um, generated suite, there'll be a lot more than four tests. First thing I suggest is you group it by output and you put similar outputs next to each other. And so um, by filtering by output here and just doing literally ordering the list by that, you can see that it's grouped these two errors next to each other side by side. And so I have these two errors that have both occurred on the same table. They're both on incident and they both have very similar errors and stack traces. And so they're very likely to be related. And so now the first thing you would do is go investigate um, customizations that you have on that table, see if there's anything that's changed. And so in this case, um, all of a sudden, I, there's this business rule I don't recognize. It was very surprising here. Um, so you could go and investigate and you can see, oh, there's this business rule somebody created which throws an error uh, that has some uh, piece of code that doesn't work. And so now you know that this is, um, you've triaged this use case and you know it's a failure. Um, what I would suggest is that um, in all likelihood, these two errors are almost certainly from the exact same cause. They're both on the same table. They both have almost the exact same stack trace. Um, and so what you can do is you can just filter out um, those errors and move on to the next one and just step-by-step -step walk through the suite, um, a grouping errors that seem to be similar and then analyzing one of them and if it seems to be a problem, you can put it in the, I'm going to fix it later. And if it's not a problem, you can ignore it. And then just step by, by step, making your way through the suite like that. And that's how we recommend getting through the generated suites. Yeah, but, but when, when you filter out and you go back to run the test, doesn't it generate the same error again? Yeah. Um, filtering out here is just for my benefit to put it to the side so I don't see it anymore. Um, it is possible to um, allow errors on this uh, on any given test, if you go to a test result, oh, this one was canceled. If you go to a failing test result, you have the um, add all errors to warning, add all errors to ignored, and you could ignore it if you don't care. Um, but in this case, um, it was it was a this error was not intended to be thrown, and so we this is something we'd want to deal with because it stops form submission. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the filter out is just meant to help you uh, be able to parse through the list without having to repeatedly look at the same thing. And sometimes the errors won't be exactly the same, like the stack traces will be slightly different. And if that's the case, you can do something more like a contains like stepped failed because like, like you could like, let's say we don't want to look at any client errors. We could do this step contains root cause was blah, blah then you can filter out like that um, if their errors aren't an exact perfect string match or if it's not an error and it's like failed to do field values on blah, blah form because of some ACL or something. Yeah, that makes sense. And also it was mentioned in best practices, um, but uh, I don't have it recreated here. Um, flappers are, are sometimes occur um, when we generate a test. 
where you generate a large number of suites, a large number of tests, uh, and create a very, very big suite. Um, sometimes there's field values that will have different values depending on the day the form was submitted. Sometimes there's things that have some sort of hash implemented. And so depending on your session, the hash will change. And there's things that are very hard to detect when we're generating the test that, hey, this test will not always pass. Um, so it's a good idea that after you've generated the test, a day or two later, uh, run the test. And anything that fails right away without having made any changes to your instance is uh, probably not going to be a very helpful test. And so you should probably either delete those or just remove them from the suite. Good insight, yeah. Oh, and then uh, one more thing. Um, since test generation uh, generally produces a large number of tests, a lot more than four, um, it's not very feasible for a human to go through all these tests and fix them, quote unquote. So um, when you notice, um, when you run your test and you notice an issue you want to look at, um, make the change, fix your in, fix whatever the issue was, um, like get your instance into the state you want it to be, but then don't update the test. You shouldn't be maintaining a, a 4,000 tests created by, by the test generation. Instead, just kick off a new generation and allow that to be the new representation of your instance. And the other thing is um, sometimes over time, uh, behavior of the instance just kind of changes a little bit. Um, this can be because of things like um, example records we were relying on no longer existing. So like a user we impersonated is no longer a user and sys user or a specific record that was inserted that we referenced is no longer there or something like that. Um, because we pull all our example data from real usage records. So if someone sets a reference value um, in a reference field, we just do the same. And so if the value we're referencing isn't there anymore, then uh, it is uh, it uh, like it won't it, the test will uh, fail when that value is removed. And that's not necessarily indicative of a you know a bug because it's just the value has been removed. But that does mean that over time, um, it's possible for um, very old test suites to become uh, inaccurate um, for the instance's behavior. And so if you have a test suite you've had in the background for six months and you haven't touched it, um, it might be a good idea to just regenerate a new suite before you go and do your regression testing. Generally, yeah. the closer you generate your suite to when you actually want to do regression testing, the the, uh, the closer you generate the suite to when you make the change. So you do this generation, make the change, and then uh, run the result. And that will give you the best results for using test generation. Yeah, that's a very key one. Because I, I remember my my um, manager says, uh, calls um, test generator dis disposable tests. So once you're, you're done running them, you can always dispose them and generate them again as much as you want. Yeah. And uh, using presets, you can save like presets, like I want to do regression testing on a specific application. I want to target like specific high volume tables or things like that. If you find that uh, the, because if you do not provide any uh, criteria under advanced, we just do as many tests as possible because we assume you want to cover the widest um, possible number of tables on your instance. But um, people have a lot of tables. And so sometimes that's too many tests um, to deal with. Uh, and so if that's the case, um, start looking there, there, we've given a couple ways of how you can try and, um, get a more manageable number. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally believe that the preset is a very good tool when it comes to using test gen, cause you can always generate them again. And once you get them disposed, you can still go back to your presets and generate them again, like Nick said. So it's awesome that we have that in the, in cloud runner right now in test gen. Yeah. And Good. I think I have run through everything I wanted to demo today. So that is the end of the best practices demo.